Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to what should be, a, hopefully, a very quick tutorial on Unity 3D on how collisions and triggers in rigid bodies and kinematic rigid bodies and static colliders all kind of interact with one another, because it's actually a source of big confusion. It used to be a source of confusion with me. I get several emails about this, um, people looking for clarification. I just answered one today, and I realized I should really make a video, because then I can just link people to the video. So, Unity's documentation does have this page that has this sort of chart here to explain when collision and trigger events get sent to different things. And I always found this to be extremely confusing and not at all clear. And it took me ages to figure out what was going on. So instead, I'm going to create a little demo uh, environment here that we'll use to learn exactly how things work one way or another. So the, uh, the most obvious thing to do, let's go and create a quick little scene with a cube here. I'm going to make the cube a little bit bigger. I'm going to center the cube, and then I'm going to give the cube a little bit of a tilt. I'm then going to add another game object called a sphere. Now, these primitives that Unity 3D come packed with will automatically provide you with colliders, right? So the, the cube here is a box collider that is the correct shape, and the sphere has a sphere collider that is also the correct shape. Now, if I just hit play right now, nothing will happen, okay? Because they're just colliders. These are static colliders. These are things in the physics engine that you have told Unity, listen, these are collisions. These are objects that are physically present that other things can collide against, but these will never move. And in fact, so I'm going to hit play here. If I then take this thing while the game is playing and I have some sort of script on these things that moves this thing around, this is actually really bad because these colliders that have no rigid bodies attached to them whatsoever, the physics system assumes that they will never move and then does a bunch of things to sort of optimize that. And every time you actually move them, it causes the physics engine to have to recalculate all of its optimizations. Things that are static colliders should never be moved if you want your game to run relatively quick. Obviously, in this scene, it doesn't matter. So things that are static colliders that make sense is things like the ground, the floor, the walls. I mean, assuming you're playing a game where you can't knock the walls over, that sort of thing, that's what a static collider is. Let me uh, uh, unplay the game, stop the game. On this ball, I'm going to add a rigid body. Now, this rigid body is now something that I'm telling the physics system, listen, this is something that is real and physical and moves in the world according to physics forces. If I hit play over here, it will be pulled down by gravity because we have the gravity checkbox turned on. But more importantly, you'll notice that it will actually collide with the surface of the cube and then roll down. And note that word. This is a collision. This is basically the only thing in the game that is a collision. If you're having problems with your on collision enter events and your on trigger enter events, the trick is this is the only thing that's a collision. Probably what you're looking for in your game is not collision detection. Most of the time it's trigger detection. If you're making some game where, you know, you've got a spaceship, you know, flying around in space and, you know, you're controlling it with just the normal sort of, you know, up, down, left, right arrow keys, like an arcadey kind of game. And you just, you're, you're thinking, oh, I want to know if a bullet collides with a player well the bullet you're playing with is probably not a true physics uh, object it's probably not using the physics engine to move around you're probably just doing something like transform dot position plus velocity or something like that right you are directly moving it which is the same thing as me grabbing this object and moving it around like that and so what you're not actually doing you're not doing an actual collision detection you are looking for a trigger detection when two objects overlap that, and that's what you're looking for, that's a trigger. So again, here, what we're doing is we're doing a collision. And what I've done is written a little script right over here. I've got a couple of things commented out. We're going to talk about that very briefly. And I realize you can like hardly see the mouse over here, which is really weird. But it's got two functions on here. It's got on collision enter and on trigger enter. And then when that happens, it just spits something out into our log, which is the reason I have the, uh, the console log nice and big over here. One thing to note, on collision enter and on trigger enter get past slightly different things. The collision or on collision enter gets past collision data, which includes all kinds of neat information, including exactly at what point, at what coordinate the collision literally happened. So, you know, the surface on surface touching point is what will be included in there uh, as um, collision dot um, contacts because it may have been touching more than one place, for example. Uh, it also gets told the exact angle of the collision. That's the the, the normal? Oh, contacts. In contacts, you get the point, which is where the actual point of the collision is, also the normal, which is the angle of the collision. Another really fun thing to play with in collision is the relative velocity, which tells you how hard the collision was, uh, because you could have things take damage or shatter if the um, relative velocity is, is high enough, for example. It's very, very cool stuff. 
On the other hand, on trigger enter gets nothing like that. The only thing you get told is, here is the collider that is currently overlapping you. This is the thing that is in you. And that's all. You don't find out, you know, are, am I only touching a little? Is this thing like completely in the middle of me? I have no idea anything. It's just, this is the thing that is overlapping you. And that's the key phrase here. Collision is a physics collision. It's a bump. Trigger is an overlap. And depending on what you're doing, well, again, 90% of the time, this is all you need. You just need a game that responds to triggers and just use that for everything. Uh, because you're probably not actually using the physics engine. So I'm going to throw that, that, that script on both of these objects, both my sphere and my cube, this collision tester. Again, the cube right now is a static collider. The sphere is a rigid body, a dynamic rigid body. So we're going to hit play, or a true rigid body. And now in the log, you can see that both objects were informed of the collision. And this is tr also true of the triggers. No matter what, if a trigger event fires or a collision event fires, both objects are notified. Now, you may not have a script on, say, this piece of floor here that actually responds to a collision, because the floor, because it doesn't move, may not give a crap, but, you know, technically the event fires for both, okay? So, this is basically the only thing that fires a collision. When a true and real rigid body hits a true collider, not trigger. If I turn trigger on this box, you'll see this ball will just fly right through, right? Because it's not a true collision, there's nothing to collide with, it does fire a trigger event. And again, both objects get notified about this, okay? So now this object here is not really a piece of floor. It's more like, um, uh, in fact, it may not even be visible, right? You could easily imagine this cube. We might turn off the mesh render. It's some invisible area that you just want to trigger there when the player walks through it. Uh, maybe that's when you want a, um, a door to open or you want a sound effect to play, or all kinds of nonsense, right? So we're, I've turned off, uh, I turn off the trigger, so now it will actually hit and collide, okay? So the only time the collision happens is when a real and true rigid body hits a real and true collider. Now what's interesting here is this box, it doesn't have to be a static collider. I could add a rigid body to this. Now if I just add a rigid body, the box will fall right at the same time so there will be no collision ever so on this box even though i'm going to keep it as a real and true rigid body which is affected by the physics engine and affected by forces i'm going to turn off gravity so it's just going to float there uh pretty much until the ball hits it and then boom it'll it'll get nudged out of the way right because it's a real and true physics object but now we actually get collision events the other thing we can do with the cube is we could um we could make it is kinematic so now it's a rigid body that is kinematic Let's hit play and see what happens. Now we will get, oh, right, we will get a collision, of course. So what is the difference? We get a collision, but once again, the cube is not affected by forces. What is the difference between a, a kinematic rigid body and a static collider, right? This is a static collider. It's got a collider and no rigid body, and here we've got a rigid body that is kinematic. They both seem to behave exactly the same. The box does not move, but we get a collision event. The difference is, with a static collider, we are telling the physics system, this object will never move, so optimize for that. And with a kinematic rigid body, we're saying, this object may move, so do a different type of optimization. Now it's totally fine that this box moves around. We will still get collisions. Now, what's really important to note, and we'll see here, on this sphere, we will set the sphere to be is kinematic. So now the sphere is no longer affected by um, physics forces, including is including gravity, even though the check mark is on, physics forces do not affect the sphere. Let's go and talk about our script over here. You'll notice I've got a function over here, some fixed update that can move my object. And I apologize for uh, background noise. It's the holidays. We've got 300 people in the house, and they all decide to make noise every time I record a video. So um, we okay. If you have a real and true rigid body. Okay, a real and true rigid body, not kinematic, not anything. The only way you should move this object is by adding forces. Explosive forces, force forces, force at position, relative force, relative torque, and you can't quite see it, but there's also add torque as well. This is how you should move real and true rigid bodies. You should give them some force, some actual physics-y force, and that's how the movement should occur. You should never directly move something. And by directly move something, I mean doing something like this dot transform dot position plus or you know, plus equals uh, some some vector you know vector three dot forward this is directly moving an object ignoring the physics system and this is never what you want to do with real and true rigid bodies because it ignores the physics system so 
why you're using a real and true rigid body if you're not using the physics system and weird things will happen. This is not good. Um, so you don't do this. Also, on if the thing has a rigid body, you can even directly update the position that way. That is a perfectly valid, as far as I can tell, these two things do exactly the same in that they're both bad to do on a true and real rigid body. And these are both the way that you move an object that is not a real and true rigid body. Um, if the thing has no rigid body component at all, clearly this will generate an error because it will not have a rigid body. Um, so you can use this for just sort of non-rigid body objects, but if it's a kinematic object, so if it's got a rigid body component, but it has is kinematic checked, as far as I can tell, both of these are totally equivalent to one another. Don't quote me on that, and certainly correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, and transform.translate is exactly the thing as this line. Um, it just, I don't know, for some reason I feel it looks sexier for some silly reason. Okay, exactly. These two are perfectly equivalent. Um, transform.translate does ask if you want to use um, if you want to use world space or not, right? So space, oops, space dot, uh, whether we're moving relative to ourselves or we're relative to world space. I, you know what? I should have just done it this way. Sorry for the confusion. Anyway, moving on. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a test here. If, uh, if the object has no rigid body or if it has a kinematic rigid body, then I'm allowed to move it this way. Else, right? only move this object with stuff like this dot rigid body dot add force you know with stuff in there that's the only way you should be moving this object all right so now i've got that let's go back to our our situation over here so right now both my objects are kinematic rigid bodies and if i hit play Right now, they're not going to be affected by any forces whatsoever, so nothing happens. But what I can do is I can manually move things this way. This is actually perfectly fine. You'll see when I go into the cube here. Really? Oh, right, of course, nothing happens. And that includes if I actually set a velocity here. So this is my script there. I've got that little space for velocity. If I hit play, it'll automatically move downwards, and nothing will happen. Why is that? Well, because both the sphere and the cube have a collider, but these are physics collisions, right? The actual, like, bang, something hit something else, kind of collisions. What I need is a trigger. Set is trigger, and it doesn't matter which object is set to a trigger. As long as one of them is a trigger, the moment they intersect, the moment they overlap, they will both get the trigger message. So it doesn't matter if it's the sphere that's the trigger or the cube that's the trigger. The result will be exactly the same. Boom, there you go. And that's the same even if they're both triggers. Doesn't matter. Even if everything is a trigger, this works. So that's why the, the shortcut to making sort of generally everything more or less work probably the way you want it is probably to just have everything in your world be kinematic rigid or kinematic rigid bodies that have trigger sphere colliders. And then you will always get your sort of intersection messages. Again, don't think of them as collisions. Think of them as intersections. Think of them as overlap. Um, so these work. This will also work if on the cube I remove the rigid body. So now the cube is back to a static collider. Uh, in fact, at this point, it's a static trigger. This will still work. And again, it doesn't matter which one of them is a trigger. As long as one of them is a trigger, it'll work. Again, if none of them is a trigger, because we're not using true rigid bodies, therefore we don't have true collisions, nothing happens at all. Okay? So I, uh, I think I've covered all the different combinations I want to look at. So again, the thing you have to remember is two things. If it's a rigid body, if it's a true rigid body, only move things this way. If it's a kinematic rigid body, or if it doesn't have a rigid body component at all, then use transform.position or transform.translate. That will be the way you want to move things, because you're moving things directly. Whether it, the only way you get a collision event is if it's a real and true rigid body colliding against a real and true collider. If, it's, if we're talking about something called a trigger, or if we're talking about something called a kinematic rigid body, then it will always fire this. In fact, almost always, it's going to be on trigger enter or on trigger stay or on trigger can't I can never remember if it's on trigger leave or on trigger exit I always do it one way and then get it wrong and then I do it the other way but most of your events will always be on triggers so use on triggers there you have it I hope this tutorial clears a few things up and um, helps you uh, helps you make your games see you next time folks bye bye